These are Air Force ballistic missiles on an assembly line. Seven years of intensive research and development stand behind them. A nationwide industrial complex has been devoted to their production. While the missile is being produced and refined, so is its supporting equipment, so are its operational sites. The name for this method is concurrency, all steps together, a jump forward in time. It even includes training crews before the missiles themselves have proved to be operationally ready so that all elements of a missile force will be integrated on a pre-planned operational date. Atlas was first operationally deployed on gantry-type pads at Vandenberg Air Force Base, California. Today, Atlases are deployed in horizontal readiness launchers. As early as September 9, 1959, strategic air command crews were capable of launching a missile from this configuration. Again, concurrency had paid dividends. Soon, more advanced atlases will be deployed at bases outside cities like Abilene and Altus, Topeka and Lincoln, Plattsburgh, Salina and Roswell. Some atlases will be in hardened, underground, horizontal launchers. Some will be in inverted silos that can withstand the effects of enemy attack and still be able to retaliate. Atlas borrowed the silo idea from our other home-based large liquid-propelled ICBM, two-stage Titan. From its inception, Titan was designed to be deployed underground, then raised on an elevator, fueled and fired. The first flight of a Titan missile took place in February of 1959. A year later, in 1960, a Titan missile flew its first two-stage flight test. By shedding its first stage at altitude, Titan gains a weight advantage over Atlas, allowing Titan to hurl a heavier payload farther, thus bringing additional power to our deterrent force. On June 23, 1961, the first flight test of a Titan II inertial guidance system took place at the Atlantic Missile Range. A modified Titan I was used, and the guidance package performed successfully. Meanwhile, concurrent with the flight test program, Titan Strategic Missile Squadron facilities were under construction. Missile silos, launch control centers, equipment terminals, guidance antennas and crew quarters, all underground, all being rushed to completion to be ready when the missiles are ready and the crews are ready. At Vandenberg Air Force Base, prototype silo facilities are used to verify designs and develop procedures for missile squadrons still under construction. On May 3, 1961, this Titan facility at Vandenberg received its test by fire. was the world's first free flight of an ICBM from a protective in-silo environment. Its complete success verified not only this silo's design, but $100 million of Titan base construction already underway. Desert flatlands outside Tucson, Arizona, the site of a second generation missile, Titan II. This is the first time Titan II has been filmed. It is the most powerful of the nation's ICBMs. It carries several megatons of nuclear destruction packed behind this metal shell, a cataclysm reserved for the most deeply buried enemy targets. In modified form, Titan II is expected to launch two-man astronaut teams on Gemini orbital flights. Titan II is simpler than Titan I, a diesel locomotive compared to an obsolete steam engine. Titan II does not have to be lifted to ground level. It blasts off from deep inside its silo. The underground support area is compact, nothing like that subway at Times Square. There is no ground guidance system. All guidance is aboard the missile. The missile requires no liquid oxygen with all of its headaches, refrigerated storage tanks, and 11th hour fueling. Titan II uses newer fuels, hypergolic liquids, which burst into flame as soon as valves open and the liquids mix. Countdown time is not 15 minutes, but less than one minute. Shock mounting of the entire installation is standard here, too. 
Titan II would be a number one enemy objective. Life in the claustrophobic capsule is a far cry from the soaring cabin of an eight-jet bomber. But the responsibility is the same. Motivation of the combat crews is the same. Training is every bit as intense as anywhere else in SAC. Captain, this is our 10th day on alert. Think we'll get the word to launch today? Well, this is a no-notice launch, so I expect that's just what we'll get, no notice. You men can go upstairs to level one and eat now. control with no margin for error is rigorously exercised. Verify the commander cross-checks the message to launch. Verify part three. Verify. Service warning control push button indicator. Lighted red. Crew report ready to launch. Deputy ready to launch. MSAT ready to launch. MFT ready to launch. Launch key turn and held. Three, two, one, mark. Fire in. Some 30 minutes after launch, the re-entry vehicles flashing down on target thousands of miles away proves that SAC's primary deterrent weapon is effective and the crews are proficient. In the future, should these weapons ever be fired in anger, the men and the missiles will be ready. <laughs> <laughs> 